Hey, my name is Andrew, and I'm a diesel technician in Southern California, and I'm tired of people getting screwed over buying used diesels that need major repairs. So I want to show you some things that you can look for to prevent that. One of the first things that I always check for is how it cranks when you start it. So I'll open the door so you can hear. You want to hear a smooth crank like this. How it's nice and even it sounds fine. The next thing would be to use a scanner and check it for codes. So I already have one hooked up down here and it's already set up on the engine. You just go codes menu, display codes, we'll do all and we have a alternator code but that's not a big deal. So we'll go back, back, back and then one of the main things you want to look for is the readiness. Because what someone could have done is cleared the codes before you came and could be hiding a few issues. But if the monitors have ran, then more than likely everything should be fine. Then they're not hiding any issues. But as you can see, not supported. Those are not complete. The misfire components and EGR are not complete. So the truck needs to be driven some more to make sure that there's no codes that could crop up and potentially cost a lot of money to repair after you purchase it. One of the next things you want to look for is the coolant level and condition. As you can see, this one is okay. It's just a little bit low, but that's fine because it's on an incline. The other thing is you should ask them not to start it when you get there so you could check it when it's cold. Because as you can tell, you'll feel the upper hose and it should be very soft. If it's hard, it could have a blown head gasket or a bad EGR cooler, which could cost a lot of money. The next thing that's very important is to check for a blow-by. So what you do is you pull the cap, just make sure you're not gonna get your fingers cut off, set it aside, and then you wanna start the truck and check it for a blow-by. And I'll use my remote start to simulate that. As you can tell, there's nothing coming out, which is great. It's okay if there's a little bit of, of smoke coming out, that can be normal. Um, if there is excessive pressure, it could be caused by, say, a worn cylinder or worn piston rings from maybe a bad air cleaner. Or also it could have a restricted crankcase filter if it has something like that. Or it could even have a clogged PCV line. So just be wary of that because you don't want to jump the gun and say it needs an engine when it doesn't. It could be something else. So obviously the next step is going to be a test drive. So you want to take it out, get it warmed up, and drive it normal for a little bit to make sure it drives normally. So we're just going to drive normal, not crazy. And see how it shifts, make sure it's smooth, it doesn't do anything crazy. And if it is an Allison transmission and it's been driven hard recently, it can shift a little hard, so don't let that discourage you because they're very adaptive transmissions. So as you can see, we got lockup. Actually, not yet. Yep. It seems to be doing fine. So you want to just drive it and make sure everything is good. It doesn't overheat. We got good oil pressure. There's no crazy vibrations or noises. And everything seems okay so far. One of the things you could also do if it's four-wheel drive is make sure that the four-wheel drive actually works. As you can see here, we're still in two-wheel drive. You don't have to put it neutral in this truck to get into four-wheel drive, but it just makes it a little better. So as you can see four-wheel drive, high is engaged. It's gonna make sure it goes into four-wheel drive and it moves, no crazy noises. Everything seems to be okay. Four 
all-wheel drive high seems to be okay. But that doesn't mean that it engaged, but it means that at least the transfer case did. So now we have it back in neutral. We're gonna put it into four high or four low, because you have to have it in neutral in order to get it into four low. And let it roll back, make sure everything's engaged. And you'll notice it's really, it's in a really low gear, so it revs. It doesn't go very fast, but that's good. It means that the four-wheel drive low is working in the transfer case, because that's what does the gearing. So four-wheel drive seems to be working good in low. So that's not something I'd be concerned with. Because these trucks, they can have problematic four-wheel drive components. But we'll get into that later on in a separate video. So now we're going to perform one of the most important tests that you can do. As long as it's four-wheel drive, you want to make sure you put it in four-wheel drive high. Turn tow haul mode on. And we're going to do a boosted launch just to make sure it works. <laughs> I'm just joking. Don't do that. You'll end up breaking something. We're going to put it back in two-wheel drive. We'll drive it a little bit like we stole it, which is okay. And everything seems good. But on a serious note, you really want to make sure there's no blow-by or very little. Because if there is, you could be looking at a potential engine rebuild or engine replacement, which can be very expensive. And if you factor that into the price of the truck, then maybe you're okay with it and something you can live with, then that's okay. But you just don't want to be caught getting a bill for that after owning it for a couple months, finding out that it needs an engine or to be rebuilt. And then the head gasket thing, you want to always make sure you check it when it's cold. Because when it's cold, it shouldn't have any pressure in it. Once it's warmed up, it obviously will. But when it's cold it should not and it could either be like i said a bad head gasket or a blown egr board and depending on the type of truck it could be either it's more common to be the head gasket but i've seen a couple cases where a bad egr cooler will cause that as well and with the code issue as well you want to make sure that you do check it for codes and make sure the monitors have completed if they haven't then could be buying someone else's problem and the last thing that you want to do is have to replace a dpf on a truck that you just purchased or and if you're okay with that again and you delete it then it is what it is but you want to make sure you at least know that before you buy it so that you're not stuck having to fork out five six thousand dollars for a dpf on something that you weren't planning on I'll be uploading videos over the next few weeks of each individual truck and its common problems to help make it easier for you to figure out what you want to buy. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe and comment down below. Thank you.